things aren't looking too good for the Brooklyn Nets as they've now lost another game to the Toronto Raptors. Hopes of reaching the playoffs are starting to look a bit overstretched now. It might be wise for the Nets to face reality and accept it was a bad season. Keep watching as we break down the Nets' hopes for making the playoffs. But first, a reminder about our brand new giveaway. We're giving away a PS5 with a copy of NBA 2K22 and Madden 22. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. First up, we should have won. Despite missing their star player, Kevin Durant, the Nets managed to put on a solid performance in their latest game against the Toronto Raptors. And at one point, it looked as if the Nets might actually pull off a win. With around five minutes left on the clock, the Nets were in a reasonably strong position as they led 96-90. Unfortunately, the Nets either got a little too comfortable or lost their focus and let the Raptors go on a 10-0 run. Even though the Nets eventually caught up to them with the game tied at 103, Seth Curry fouled Toronto's Gary Trent Jr., who didn't hesitate in sealing the deal for good. During the post-game conference, LaMarcus Aldridge told the press that they should have won, but the absence of dominating players like Ben Simmons and Kevin Durant does take a toll on overall team performance, whether you like it or not. When you're leading by six points with only five minutes left on the clock and end up losing, it's a different kind of hurt. Even though we sympathize with the Brooklyn Nets and LaMarcus Aldridge, they should have won the game. They had it in the bag, but got too lazy. Next, the supposed superpower. It's kind of ironic when you think about it, to be honest. When this season kicked off, the Nets were being called the superpower and really strong contenders for the NBA championship. But with a couple of injuries and just bad basketball, they're struggling to secure a position in the playoffs. Much of it comes from Kyrie's decision to not get vaccinated, Durant's injury, and a lack of chemistry between the players. But when you're missing your best players, someone has to step up and lead from the front. But we're yet to see that from anyone in the Nets. And honestly, Kyrie does have the ability to win games single-handedly, but he hasn't done much. In fact, he might have actually contributed to the team's poor performance if you ask us. His status as an unvaccinated worker means he can't play any home games this season, at least until the vaccination mandate is lifted. But till then, he can only participate in away games. It's kind of disturbing for the team if you think about it. As soon as the Nets start to gel, a player has to sit out so Kyrie can play. And not to mention the whole Ben Simmons deal hasn't turned out too good for the Nets either. Simmons claimed he had some mental health issues that he was working on prior to being traded to the Nets. But still, he wasn't playing before being traded, and he isn't playing after. While we're glad he managed to deal with his mental health, he now has a back injury, and it isn't clear when he can return. A difficult situation as a player and for the team. Next, Return of the King. Kevin Durant is easily one of the best players of the new generation. His ability to change the game is unbelievable. We're guessing it all comes down to how much sense you have on the court. Some players work really hard, and some are just naturally gifted, Durant is both. He's seen playoffs, finals, he's won Rookie of the Year along with being the most valuable player in 2013-2014 season. But to keep things simple, let's just say he has the ability to set the tone on the court. Unfortunately, Durant has missed out a lot of games this season due to his ligament injury. And while things are still dark for the Brooklyn Nets, his return can certainly make a difference. And to be honest, it won't be the first time we've seen a team finish at 7th or 8th, make it to the playoffs, and actually go ahead to play the finals. A tough task to accomplish but not too difficult with Durant on your side. He's expected to return on Thursday night as the Nets get ready to take on the Miami Heat. Let's see if he can find his mojo late in the season. After the Raptors game, stand-in coach Jacques Vaughn said that there is an urgency within the team, but they still have to sense it and come to terms with it. That's the only chance the Nets have to turn this season around and win a championship. Um, we're not exactly sure what urgency he's talking about. It's starting to sound a little weird now. There's a lot surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. We get that, but we're talking about a team that's ranked at 8th and trying to make a championship run? How much weight can Durant pull? If you want something magical to happen, you need a team effort. For now, it sounds like the Nets are relying a bit too much on Durant's return. We'll just have to wait until we finally get to see the urgency. And since the Nets are taking on the number one ranked Miami Heat, it's a pretty good chance to show this urgency Coach Jacques Vaughn has been talking about. Now, in other NBA news, just when we thought King James was nearing the end of his career, he does something extraordinary. It isn't a surprise, to be honest. We expect excellence from King James, and that's exactly what we got. About a week or two ago, LeBron James was under a lot of fire because of his snarky remarks during the NBA All-Star Weekend. He wasn't too happy with Rob Pelinka and the team management for staying idle during the trade window. During all this, a lot of analysts and experts thought that the Lakers' management should trade LeBron James and get some young blood into the team. Believe it or not, some actually thought that trading him would be the quickest and easiest way to fix the Lakers. But there's one thing we've noticed about James. If you give him what he wants, he'll do anything he can to make sure the team wins. LeBron James single-handedly ended the Lakers' four-game losing streak
winning streak as he went on to score a colossal 56 points against the Golden State Warriors. Look at it this way, LeBron James was responsible for 45% of the total points scored by the Los Angeles Lakers. That's just incredible. After the match, LeBron was pretty cool about it and said, I don't give a damn about the 56. I'm just happy we won the match. It looks like the King has just responded to all his critiques, and that too was style. Next, $50,000 fine. New York Knicks Julius Randle was recently fined $50,000 as he shoved Suns forward Cam Johnson late in the game. He wouldn't have been fined such a large sum, but during all of this, there was a match official trying to separate the two. But in the heat of the moment, Randle either didn't notice or just didn't care and whipped the referee's arm out of the way and shoved Johnson. If you ask us, we don't think he deserved it. His reaction might have been a little out of line, but if you look closely, it was actually Johnson that started it. Johnson pushed Randall away first, which was then followed by reaction. Now, we're not saying basketball is a gentleman's sport, it's a physical game. There's bound to be some physical aggression, but in most cases, it's not done intentionally. That's why players don't react that often. But Johnson was also handed a technical foul after being assessed, indicating that there was some aggression from his side as well. However, Randall was ejected from the game after being assessed for two technical fouls. Looks like Cam Johnson had the last word. As far as the final result is concerned, the Phoenix Suns managed to edge a victory by just one point, winning the game 115 to 114. Lastly, Eastern dominance. The Boston Celtics have always been a pretty dominant side in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. They probably have a really impressive trophy room with 17 championship trophies. Apart from that, three has always been a lucky number for the Celtics. The first big three they had was back in the 80s with Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish. The new generation big three had Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce. But this time around, they've managed to do it without a big three. It's been more of a team effort. Now, they haven't exactly had the dream season. Their performance has been pretty inconsistent, but after 2022, there has not been a better team than the Boston Celtics in the NBA. They might just end up winning the Eastern Conference Finals. They've won 15 out of their last 18 games and are heading strong into the playoffs, ranked at number 5. That's it from our side, folks. So what do you think? Will the Nets be able to land a spot in the playoffs? Will Durant finally create that urgency the coach has been looking for? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you.